You also want to be sure that you're keeping your cell phone charger mm -hmm. and any other electric chargers that you need to take with you, your camera, your medications in your first aid kit we talked about, mm -hmm. battery powered radio and TV with extra batteries, and a video camera and a tape. Now the video camera, we all have been videotaping our homes as an insurance measure so that we're sure. And what you can do is you simply walk around with your camera and have a running dialogue that talks about all the different items of value in your home, whether it's um, computer, it's furnishings, it's any kind of large um, purchases that you've made. Just so as an insurance record, if something catastrophic were to happen, although you may not have the paper that says how much this piece of furnishing costs, you would have a record of having owned it. And so you want to take the camera and the tape because you want to have a way to play back the tape because not all these tapes are universal. Um, and you can contain all of these in a 66-quart bin. A 66-quart bin is kind of a moderate size, clear container, and you can label it with just emergency preparedness on the exterior and just keep it in the bottom of a closet so things are all together. Now, things like your car chargers, you need all the time. So you want to make a list that you tape to the top of this bin so when you're getting ready, you make sure that all of the things are in the bin and um, your, your kit is complete that way. Um, and then, of course, you can use Ziplocs inside the bin to contain things together. Um, as you're preparing, just be thinking about all the other family heirlooms that are important, such as diplomas, family correspondence, um, and as much as you can, just have a list of the things that you want to take with you. In the case of a hurricane, we're going to have time to prepare to take those things, but we need to know where they are so we can easily access them and have thought through how much of it do we want to take. Um, and just decide what's most important to you because everything for all of us is different what's most important. And there's also items that you won't be able to bring. And so by having that videotape, you'll be able to, to share that. One of the things that I brought this evening is our family list of our emergency preparedness checklist. Mm -hmm. And um, Connie, the librarian, told me that I had left off the can opener <coughs> and the cooler on here. Oh, so yeah. I want you all to add that onto your list, and I'll add it onto mine so the next time I hand it out, I have it on there. But it's just kind of a starting point. One of the things we all experienced in Rita, too, is that you actually need cash on hand. So you might have a stash of whatever amount of cash you feel most comfortable with kept in with this emergency pre preparedness group. Pardon? $500. Yes, that's what um, is what most people talk about. Um, I you know, agree with that. Mm -hmm. Having your checkbooks, um, just several of those things that, you know, we take for granted that we could get cash out of the ATM kind of thing. So if there's other things that you realized as you're going through, mm -hmm. what other things do um, did you all take with you that as you were thinking of leaving or? Basically, you know what you have on this list, mm -hmm. really. It's great. The only thing I don't go along with is the gas in cans, having that in the trunk of your car. Um, and that would only be, I think, if you decide to stay behind and you have a generator oh, is that for it? us. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so we have a generator, so. If that was for when you're departing. Yeah, no, no, no definitely not okay. if you're departing. Um, and the other thing Some is. Some people do that. No, yeah, you have to be really careful when right. transporting that. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure you're in approved containers for any kind of transportation okay. of volatile I liquids. See, for the generator. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And a lot of us have installed generators. And so we do have to have in mind that you're not going to be able to get gas as easily as you thought, as we experienced in Rita, so that you need to be prepared for that by planning ahead and how you're going to accommodate that. So let's talk about our communications, because having a plan is very critical for all of us. And another thing we experience through Katrina is the fact that our cell phones don't always work in the area we're in. And so by having a plan, everyone in your family will know what is going to happen next, and then you can communicate when you get to the next space. Um, make sure everyone in your family knows where your emergency supplies are, so that once you create this 66-quart bin, 
everybody in the family is aware, okay, this is where it's stored, this is where we, we get it from. Um, you want to establish a family reunion spot in your home and outside of your home. And that was something that a lot of people through the Katrina process didn't have that experience. So they were scattered and were unable to connect with people. But um, having designated one spot that's outside of the city so that everybody knows this is where we're heading to, whatever means. Um, and then, of course, being inside the city as well. Um, mm -hmm. Um, my mother and I, we have made a decision to go to my brother because he's outside of our day loans. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, just having a plan like within your family because people who have young children have to think about preparing them in case of emergency too. So just having the conversation very calmly, what would you do if mommy was sick and couldn't get the emergency box? Who would do that? So as you're just talking through the calmness of Here's our plan, what would you do? It's a really good solution-based way to incorporate your family because everybody feels apart and there's buy-in, but it's also a way for you to start preparing them because it's a very traumatic situation when things change very dramatically like that. So you want to be preparing your family as well. Um, and then, you know, just having some kind of emergency identification that's carried with each of your family members in case you are separated. and. For children, you know, there's different shoe tags, um, helping them, you know, label different parts of their clothing, things like that, just so in case of separation. And um, one of the other things that I do with our family is have an emergency contact list because, and I did pass this out because my children would kill me if I shared all their yeah, vital right. statistics, <laughs> but um, this is a list where um, I have two children and each of them have children. So each of these boxes represents mm -hmm. one child, all their cell phone numbers, their email addresses, cool. and it's all in one place right. so that, and I gave each of them a copy of this so that they can um, keep up with each, mm -hmm. each other, which that facilitates, but just so that everybody has all the information needed, work, cell, home, regular address. So right. it's just a way to facilitate everybody knowing how to get in contact with each other. So what I want to do tonight is to probe you, you know, to prompt you on to get started on getting your emergency preparedness together. So the best way to do is to start by walking around your house and just creating a list. A list of what papers you want to include, a list of all the tasks, like do we need to video, when's the last time we videoed, and what supplies, do we need more D batteries? So by creating that list, you're going to be able to go forth and purchase the items you need and consolidate them. Um, and a lot of times, I even recommend having multiples of things around your house. And many of us have multiple flashlights around the house as is, because if the lights go off in one section, you're not going to necessarily be able to get to the next section without that. Um, keep your list with your paper documents so that you're always able to see what you have and think about getting started in the next week or so because we are already in the middle of hurricane season and we know usually most of this is going to occur by mid-August. 